Hello everybody. Welcome to Genesis Junction. I'm Miss Christy and we're back for another week. And this week's lesson, we are going to talk more about wisdom. And we started that last week when we talked about Solomon. But first, let's review our Bible truth. We've been talking about these for eight weeks now. We're on lesson number 88. And let's see how many of you know these. So you yell them right to the camera so I can hear you. Who is in control of all things? even if we have to wait a long time. God, yes, he's in control of all things. And what is that word, a big word, that means that God is in control of all things? Sovereign, yes, very good. And what does God want us to do if we know we've sinned we know we've done something wrong. What does he want us to do? Confess. Yes, confess our sins to him. And we should make it right with the person if we've done wrong by someone. And last of all, it's our word. What does, what is the beginning of wisdom the fear of the Lord yes we've been talking about wisdom a lot so I think that each week we're getting smarter and smarter because we are building our wisdom and today we're gonna talk more about that but let's review what we did last week so hopefully you're all caught up and everyone is with me on the same page, on the same unit. And who remembers what we talked about last week? Do you remember this? What was this? This was... We talked about these two buildings. This big tent where the Israelites used to worship God. And then this very beautiful permanent building where they now could worship God. And God moved in with that cloud, remember? This building is the holy temple and this tent was the tabernacle. And King David's son, when he became king, Solomon, after David, built this temple to worship the Lord. Okay, And it was a beautiful building. So many things inside. Very important pieces of furniture and articles. Some of them that they used had used in the tabernacle. And some new things. We talked about those. And we also talked how a lot they use cedar and special woods and metals. And a lot of it was all covered with gold. It was amazing. And so we talked about that. And the week before that, remember we talked about how Solomon had asked God for wisdom. Remember God said, Solomon, I will give you anything you ask. Anything. And Solomon asked, Solomon asked for wisdom. Not riches, not gold, not, you know, all kinds of cattle and all kinds of land. He asked for wisdom to help rule God's people. And God was very pleased with his choice. So today, what we're going to talk about is the result of Solomon getting all that wisdom from God. Okay? 
and in our Bibles, a few weeks ago, we talked about Psalms. Remember, we said that King David had written many of the Psalms. It was kind of in the middle of the book, the middle of our Bibles, and that there was different kinds of Psalms, thankful Psalms, in Psalms of laments where they cried out to God, but most of the Psalms were Psalms of praise, just giving God the glory. And right after Psalms is a book called Proverbs. And when God gave Solomon all that wisdom, he wrote it down. And that many of those things that he learned, he put down in the book of Proverbs. Now, what is a proverb? Who knows what a proverb is? Have you ever heard that? It is a short saying that reminds us how things usually happen in everyday life. Okay, so just a short little saying that helps remind us how things usually go in everyday life. So, and uh, many people all around the world have made up their own Proverbs. Solomon wrote down the Proverbs that he received from God, these little sayings he received from God to help explain the world. But many people groups from all over the world have their own sayings. Let's see if you recognize some of these. What does it mean when I say, better safe than sorry? Have you heard that one before? Maybe your mom or your dad has said, better safe than sorry. Right? They probably said that if we break the rules or if we take a shortcut, we may get hurt. We don't follow the directions the right way. That's what that means. So that saying helps us to remember that if we follow the rules, things should come out good for us, right? How about this one? If you're on a sports team, you may have heard this one before. Practice makes perfect. Have you heard that before? So if we want to be good at something and do it perfectly, we have to practice and practice and practice over and over again, right? That's how you get good. What does this one mean? An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Have you heard that? Eating good things like apples will keep us healthy. And so we don't get sick as much and we don't have to go visit the doctor. Of course, back when this proverb, this saying came out, doctors used to make house calls. Now they don't go door to door anymore like they used to, but that's why they said it keeps the doctor away. He won't have to come visit your house if you're healthy. So things like that, those are proverbs. But those aren't necessarily godly proverbs. There's a lot of wisdom that the world may have, but we always want to be very careful to follow God's wisdom. We always should look at what we're hearing and match it up with God's word to make sure the wisdom we receive is the best kind of wisdom. God's wisdom because we don't want to make any mistakes even though we probably will and we can learn from those mistakes but God's ways usually result in a good outcome for us because God is wise so King Solomon wrote most of the book of Proverbs and he wrote it because he was. this was back when he first started having a family and he wanted to teach his children. So he wrote down this wisdom. 
So when we read the Proverbs, we can gain godly wisdom too. So let's get your Bibles out and let's go to Proverbs. So let's go to the middle of our book and find Proverbs. And we are going to go to chapter 2. And we are going to read verses 4 and 5. So find chapter 2 and verses start with chapter 4. So let's listen to what Solomon said about wisdom in chapter 2. So starting with verse 4, read with me. Search for it as you would for silver. Hunt for it like hidden treasure. Then you will understand what it means to respect the Lord. Then you will begin to know God. So how should we seek for wisdom? Like hunting for silver, right? How should we search for wisdom? Like hidden treasure. That's right. If we knew there was a treasure nearby of gold or silver, you know we'd have that map out and we'd be searching all over for it because we would want to find it. And this is what Solomon's saying. He's saying you can find the wisdom for God, but you have to seek and search for it and he will give it to you. Right? So... If you can look at our, our poster for today, what does this look like? It does. It looks like a treasure map. And so see the path here to the treasure? What is the boy using to help him find the treasure of wisdom? What does he have in his hand? Yes, the Bible. The Bible is God's word. It can help us stay on the right path. What does staying on the path of wisdom help the boy keep away from? Look at all those things that are along that path. What do you see there? Somebody saw a snake? and a skull, and a scorpion, and a vulture. Yeah, Woo. those seem like bad things, right? So if we want to stay away from those, those pictures remind us of bad things that we all do. Sins like unkindness, or being mean to others, getting angry and disobeying. But when we obey what the Bible says, it helps us stay away from sin. And that's being wise. We'll make our way down to that treasure of wisdom. So when you think about that, think about your Bible, not just being a book, not being an old book full of stories, but we know it is truth and it can be a treasure of wisdom to help us live this life. That's how we should look at our Bibles. So we know that God's word can help us stay on the path to true wisdom. But some things in the Bible are hard to understand. Who is the one that helps us understand it? Let's see what the next verse says. So let's go back to our Bible, to chapter 2 in Proverbs, and now let's read verse 6 together. 
it says, Only the Lord gives wisdom. Knowledge and understanding come from him. So who gives true wisdom and knowledge and understanding? The Lord. Yes. Wait a minute. That reminds me of our memory verse. I think it has something to do with wisdom, doesn't it? Oh, I blocked out some different words this week. Let's see if how we can do with that. Let's start with what is our memory verse? Who remembers what book of the Bible it comes from? James. Good job. I think I heard James say James. <laughs> James 1, 5 says, let's see how you can do it. Remember in the hidden words. If any of you... lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who, what does that say, gives, who gives, generously, to all without reproach. Remember what reproach meant? We talked about it last week. And it will be given to him, to you. Okay? So let's read it all together. James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, without disapproval or disappointment, and it will be given him. All right, very good. So, wisdom doesn't come from me. Wisdom doesn't come from you. Wisdom doesn't come from our leaders or our government. True wisdom comes from God. And all we have to do is ask him and read it in the word. The Lord is the only one who has true wisdom. That's why learning about him is so important. Solomon said wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. Bible truth. That means we need to start by believing what God says and show him respect and honor. When we do that, we'll be on the right path to treasure, to making good choices that please God. The whole Bible is full of God's truth and wisdom, but the book of Proverbs is like a treasure chest of wise sayings that help us make good choices. Proverbs talks about choosing good friends, listening to our parents, working hard, being careful of our words, and a lot, lot more. We're going to go on a treasure hunt. We're going to look for wisdom that comes from the book of Proverbs. So I'm going to move the camera and you can go on this treasure hunt. And the younger class you can do this at home as well because these cards are going home with you. And you can see how I just took the cards, the proverb cards, hung them on some string, and just kind of made a loop 
around the classroom. We're going to follow them and read what they say. Parents, for you at home, you can hide the Proverbs cards around the house or outside on a nice day and maybe even make a map of your yard and see if your passengers can go on a treasure hunt and find those proverbs and then discuss what they mean together. All right, I'm gonna move this so we can see what we're looking at. All right, I think we have all of this together. Okay, so let's see. I don't have a big space, so this is what I've got to work with. We're going to start here with this cactus and follow the string. Here we go. Here's a Proverbs. It says, Proverbs 22, chapter 22. So if you have your Bibles, especially that older class, you Durango drivers, you can follow along in your Bibles. And we're going to read verses 24 and 25. Make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with a wrathful or hot-tempered man, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare or a trap. What do you think that means? Those are kind of some big words in there. Basically what that means is don't be friends with an angry person or you'll end up becoming angry and kind of be like him. So if you know someone that's got a hurt heart and they seem mad at the world, you know, it's nice to be able to tell them, to be nice to them always, and maybe they will be nice. But if you tried and then they're still angry, it's probably good to keep your distance. And maybe they will see you being nice and know that the Lord is in you and they will want to know what makes you so nice. And maybe they'll accept Jesus through you. All right, let's follow this. Down under here. I found another one. Let's read this one. So go to Proverbs 15 and we'll read the very first verse. Okay, this says, A soft answer turns away wrath or anger, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Hmm. What do you think that means? Well, what that means is that when you speak calmly, that kind of calms people down. When your voice is low, when you speak soft, the people around you, it just kind of naturally calms down a situation. However, if everyone's yelling and screaming and no one's listening to each other and everyone's just loud, then that usually doesn't help the situation. So a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So that can help you in a situation. If it's starting to get loud and really noisy, then just start talking soft and start being nice and maybe the situation will turn around for you. Okay, let's see what else we got. Follow the string. Here's another one. This is in chapter 21. Proverbs 21, verse 23. Whoever keeps or whoever guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. Hmm. What do you think that means? Have any ideas? Well, that basically just means it's important to control 
what we say. We should really think about what we're going to say before we say it, right? And what comes out of our mouth should always be true. We should never lie. And what comes out of our mouth should be encouraging, should be kindness and nice. And it should never be anything bad that comes out of our mouth. And that will keep you out of trouble. Okay, let's keep following. Around and around and around. Here's another one. This one says, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22. Listen to your father who gave you life. And do not despise or do not disrespect or do not hate your mother when she is old. Oh, I like this one. Okay, so what do you think this means? This is pretty easy. Listen to your father and love your mother. Then it will go well with you. Because us parents, we love it when our kids listen, when they obey, and when they love us. And of course, we always love you, our kids. Let's keep going. Last, oh, no, two more. Here's another one. Proverbs 12, chapter, or chapter 12, verse 22. Ooh, here's another one about lying. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are his delight. Mm, that's a big word, abomination. What do you think that means? It means wicked or disgusting. So lying lips are disgusting to the Lord. But those who act faithfully are his delight. So basically, that means the Lord hates liars. He does not like liars. But he loves and takes delight in those who tell the truth. Very important thing to remember. If you're tempted to lie about something, remember that the Lord really hates it. All right, one more to go. And around and over. Here's the last one. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is a sorrow to his mother. Hmm. What does that sound like to you? What does that mean? Being wise pleases your parents, while being foolish makes them sad. So how can we be wise? We've been talking about it for the last couple of weeks. How can we be wise? Right, to listen to God, read his instructions in the Bible, and obey them, right? Live it out. Live it out. Good job following me along on that treasure hunt. So, let's see if I can get back to my seat here. Woof. Felt like we were just like this boy going for this treasure hunt. Great job. Remember, these are only a few of the many Proverbs that are in the book of Proverbs. There is a lot written down in there because it's just a couple lines at a time, these little nuggets of truth. But they are all wise 
sayings because they are from God's word. They can help us understand how God wants us to live every day. As we read God's word and grow in wisdom, we can find a lot of great advice in the book of Proverbs. Following this advice and doing what it says can help us keep away from sins like unkindness, anger, and disobedience. Because we don't want to be like that, do we? We can learn to be a good friend, honor our parents, be kind, and much more. And in the, this world, People need other people to be kind and honoring to each other. But here's an important question to think about. If we obey the commands in Proverbs and we do these good things, does that mean we'll automatically go to heaven? Hmm. Think about that. If we do all these things, we do all these good things, does that mean we automatically go to heaven when we die? Who can answer that for me? Especially that older class, the Durango drivers. If we just do good things in our lives, does that mean we automatically go to heaven when we die? No, it doesn't. We definitely should do good things, but we are all sinners, right? So there's a very important piece that we need to know. What's that very important piece? Or I should say, who is that very important piece that we need to know? Yes, Jesus. We need to believe in Jesus. We need to acknowledge what he did, that he died on the cross, that he took our sins from us, and he rose from the dead and sits next to God in heaven, and he intercedes for us. And we talk with him, and we praise him, and he becomes our best friend. That is the important part. Because we can do good things all the time. There's a lot of people in this world that do do good things. Of course, they do do bad things, because the Bible says we are all sinners. But there's a lot of people that do good things. But if they don't know Jesus, then they don't get to heaven. So that's why it's important for us to share about Jesus with other people because, you know, sometimes we can see people and it's easy to tell that they're kind of living a bad life. Like they're liars or they're not nice to their classmates or they're not obeying their parents and or they're stealing things. You know, that's definitely bad. And they need Jesus. But sometimes there's our friends that seem good and nice. But if they don't know Jesus, then they might not go to heaven in the end. And that is where we can come in and share the good news about Jesus with our friends. So, and why we want to obey him we want to do good for things for him because we love him. And he did die for us to take away our sins. So we want to do good things for him. All right. So let's talk about, well, let's pray. And then we will talk about what your homework is. We got some more fun things. I loved seeing your pictures of your temples that you made out of the Legos. Those were great. And if you're still working on that one, 
That lesson from last week, keep showing me, sending me the pictures. If you're making your temple in the sandbox or out of your Legos or out of regular blocks, let me know and show me the picture of what you did because they were pretty cool. So let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for sharing your wisdom with all these passengers through your word. Forgive us for all the times that we may have sought man's wisdom over your wisdom. Give us all wisdom so that we can make good choices in our lives that please you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us freeing us from our sins and building us a house in heaven. We can't wait to join you there whenever that time may be. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so for the younger class, besides making your own little treasure hunt that we just did, you will also have Let's see if I can get this camera to stay still. What does this look like? This looks like a memory game. Yes. So we have a memory game. And you can almost make it look like, I was thinking maybe making it look more like an X. So it can look like a treasure map, like an X. Maybe you can get to do that a little bit more than something like that. Eh, maybe not so much. Anyway, okay. You know how to play memory with your family, right? You take turns flipping one over. Oh, whoops. <laughs> or flipping my camera over. Thought I had that nice and tight. Is it going to stay? Stay. It's just too heavy. Anyway, so you know. I'll try and be quick. Yeah, you flip it over, and then someone else flips over another one, and no match, right? So then you have to flip them back over, and then the next person goes. So you know how that one works. All right. So that is for you. Adirondack Mountaineers, and of course you have your take-home sheets. So there's a little trail that looks like our lesson map, and there's also another one to color, and all the pieces for the Proverbs treasure hunt, and to make your memory game at home. So that'll be fun. Now for the older class, you have your class notes, and so there's your Proverbs to read. So read Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, chapter 2, verses 1 through 6, and chapter 12, verse 25. And that will help you answer this crossword puzzle. Okay? I love crossword puzzles. And there's even the word bank down there to help you fill in some of those blanks. And besides crossword puzzle, there's a search word on here with some important wisdom and some blanks here for your memory verse. You know, the ice cream challenge, I still have some tickets left over. So even though the month is over. If you still send me your memory verse, I can still get you an ice cream coupon. So don't think you missed out. You can still do it. Let me know. Now this is fun for you Durango drivers. You get to make a treasure hunt game. So it'll look like this. Okay, so you have all the pieces here. You just have to cut them out, okay? So you have all these different pieces to cut them out. 
and put them along like if you have two pieces of construction paper or just a big piece of poster board at home you can just glue it and make your trail on your game board however you want and then it has these numbers so you can cut out the numbers put them in a jar or a hat and pull them out of the hat and that's how many spaces you move forward and depending on where you put your pieces of your game board um, it you might have to end up going backwards hopefully you don't because with wisdom we should be moving forward so that will be your homework and show me your games after you get your game all built that would be fun to see you having a fun time with your family playing your board game and then this you can play all summer and another thing i was thinking of is that these videos if you don't have time to watch them at home and i hope you are but if you're not and maybe you're planning a family vacation and maybe you usually watch a movie when you're in the car taking a long road trip i was thinking that these videos would be great because you can be in the back seat you can have your crossword puzzles and your search words and you could be following along watching miss christy and learning the lesson for the week and having this work there to do at the same time while you're taking your road trip it would make the time fly by like that so when you're done with your homework you'd be at your vacation spot. I think that's kind of fun. So give you something to do in the car, gaining wisdom while you're on the road. And we always want to have our eyes out, searching for wisdom, looking for God's fingerprints wherever we go. Okay. All right. It was great seeing you and I hope you have a great week. Stay cool. Whew. It's hot. If you are going anywhere, I hope it has a pool or a lake, or a river, or something to play in, because it's a hot one, okay? Miss you, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.